This one is going to blow your mind. Hey, what's shaking, Warfighter Nation? Ron here with Warfighter Ranch and Isaiah 6 8. Today's Paracord 101 countdown. Ooh, it's a doozy. It's number 51. I've been waiting for this one. Yes, it's number 51, and you know exactly where I'm going with this one. Happy Red Friday. Don't forget to remember everyone deployed, including Jesus, who deployed to heaven after the original Red Friday. I'm here to tell you about some very special people here today. Some unsung heroes. And their recognition is really long overdue. Our honoree in particular today is a man that I've never even met, never served with, uh, but apparently we chewed some of the same dirt. Everybody knows what an amazing job our 75th Ranger Regiment, 3rd Bat Boys did over in Mogadishu 20 years ago. What a hard fought battle that was. And... Everybody knows most of their names, but the unsung heroes I'm talking about today are the guys who are at the airfield. Of course, I'm talking about Army firefighters, the best job in the military, the best choice MOS. I don't know how many guys I've talked to over my career that said they went MP because they couldn't get firefighter. Kind of makes sense because you can't spell wimp without... Just saying. The majority of these incredible firefighters, these amazing service members, came from the 91st Engineer Detachment firefighters out of Fort Rucker, Alabama. As happens often on deployments with firefighters back in those days, you tend to get augmented by other deployable teams and some of their members because there's only six members on a team. That's it. And at the time I left the Army, there were only four left in the world, and that was down from seven when I started. The 91st in Mogadishu was augmented by Fort Carson Fire Department's PFC's Abitoy and D'Souza, Fort Bragg's Sergeant Ebert and Specialist Gonzalez, and the 91st, those members were Sergeant Roger Smith, Specialist Baudillo Garcia, Specialist Pouch, Sergeant Lewis, and our honoree today, the Fire Chief of Mogadishu himself, Staff Sergeant Pat Pippin. Most of you know I'm a pretty avid book collector. I cherish my signed military book collection. Sadly, this is not among them. However, I wanted to share with you today a reading from... A pretty noteworthy warfighter, uh, Colonel David Hackworth. Uh, Hack. Kids, you might want to Google that one. Uh, Colonel Hackworth's book, Hazardous Duty Here, he's posed a chapter called Unfortunate Casualties, detailing the mission in Somalia. Unfortunate Casualties refers to the term that then-President Clinton used to describe our fallen. historical fact. So I want to read to you a couple of excerpts here. The first one's found on page 173. 
the men and women who stayed behind at the airbase came running to unload the wounded and the dead. Earlier that day, a sergeant who worked at the base fire station had waved at the departing choppers. This was the custom at the dish whenever the Hawks took off on a raid. I guess it was about 30 minutes later I came in and the guys were all jumping on the fire truck, he reported. So I got the Humvee and followed them out on the runway. There was a UH-60 that had been shot up. We took one guy off with half his head blown off. We hosed the aircraft down and returned to the station. We had no sooner got back when somebody ran in yelling that a Humvee had been hit and it was full of wounded. I ran over and helped unload the body of a guy who looked to be about 17. I still had no idea what the hell was going on. A five ton pulled up and I ran over and helped them open the back of it. What I saw was something I was never prepared for. Wounded Rangers were piled on top of dead ones who were on top of Somali POWs who were on top of Somali dead. I reached up and helped pull a guy down. His leg and arm were blown off. He was dead. I ran and got another one. He had been hit real bad. He died on the stretcher. The sergeant and I picked up another stretcher and carried it to the morgue before we realized the guy had an RPG stuck in his chest. We had to build a bunker for his body because of fear of the RPG exploding. The second excerpt is from page 178. Back at the airbase, the fireman who had said prayers for the relief column was also loading and unloading the dead and the wounded. We would take them off and place them in the morgue or the hospital tent, he wrote later. I helped carry in three more dead. Each litter was a body covered up with a plastic bag. The rotor wash blew the bag off one of the guys. He was very young looking. He had a peaceful look on his face. Then I noticed the whole top of his head was gone. Unfortunate casualties. Hmm. So, all things considered, we created these three pieces for you, Pat Pippen, the fire chief of Mogadishu. God bless you, brother. And if you're ever up Independence, Oregon way, stop by 5150 Tactical. That's Pat's shop. Stop by and shake the hand of a legend.
what we do here is the art of spiritual warfare. Next mission, time now. Move Vent 6, this is Smoke Jumper 7. Roger that. Next mission, time now.